When we get visitors come to visit us here at The Dish, our three famous questions are, can I take a hayride from seeing the movie? Where is Sam Neill? And can they play cricket on The Dish? When the telescope was built back in the 1960s, uh, Australians knew about it because it's always in the news. But since then, the public knowledge of the telescope had waned, but when the film opened, it reintroduced the telescope and the work that we do here to an entirely new generation of Australians. Look, it brings a tear to my eye, believe it or not. I just enjoy watching the movie, and I think it just promotes parks as a lovely country town in the middle of New South Wales that has this iconic structure that brings all this science into our community. I, along with uh, my wife Lindy and our two children, Hannah and Drew, were extras in the movie The Dish. Two, one, zero, let's go. The movie had its own storyline and there was a lot of things that weren't true about Parks that were portrayed in the movie. But certainly one of the things that was in the movie that was actually very true was the, the very strong winds that occurred on the morning of the moon landing. So that was a really dramatic moment and I think that was one of the things that inspired the filmmakers to actually um, come and do the film on that because um, under those extremely trying conditions, you know, um, we were able to receive the TV pictures and share them with uh, 600 million people around the world, one sixth of mankind at the time. So it was a, a great triumph of, of Australian expertise. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. One of the contributions I made for the film was I uh, provided the, the mathematical figures that appeared on the, the blackboard. In the film, as you know, they search for the missing Apollo 11. And um, I compared my results with the logbook entries to make sure that the, that the figures were pointing in the general correct direction. And when I saw that in the film, I was really, really overjoyed. We said, ah, right, it looked convincing to me anyway, so I hope it looked convincing to everybody else. So, but that was a lot of fun doing that. Of course, the producers of the show uh, would have wanted um, something historical for the filming. Forbes was used because they've got some magnificent uh, historical buildings here. The magnificent town hall, that served as the venue for when, in the scene, the Mayor of Parks welcomes the US ambassador. And uh, that famous line where the Mayor introduces his wife as a lemon. Who would ever forget that? <laughs> Once the film was released and started to get wonderful reviews and started to make big money at the box office, and that's when um, that parochialism between the two towns started to shine through. The radio telescope was certainly an icon of, the, of, of our community. It had been a part of our logo for many years and we were very proud. It was something that people knew of Parks' existence because of the radio telescope. And, but what the movie did was increase the profile of Parks as a result. Before the movie, the visitor numbers sat around 50,000 visitors to the centre. After the movie, they increased to over uh, just on 150,000, so they nearly tripled, and they're currently sitting on about 100,000, which is great. Well, the dish has been absolutely great for the, the Parks Radio Telescope because it raised the profile of the observatory and the work that we do here. It encouraged people to actually go back and find out what really happened here during the Apollo 11 mission. And then when they've done that, they then learn about all the work that we've done since then and in addition to all that, all the great radio astronomical work we've done the great discoveries we've made that has completely reshaped and, and caused us to reappraise our understanding of the universe. <laughs>